in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to prepare an input file for an assimilation and fractional crystallization run using the magma chamber simulator. So the first thing we need to do is open up the input file. In order to get to that, we need to navigate to our finder window. Again, if you're not quite familiar with the Mac, it's down here in the bar and it's a little happy face. From there, we can navigate to our documents folder and then into our MCS folder and then into our input and output folder. Uh, again, if you're making your own input file from scratch, you can use this general prototype MES file to type over. But for right now, we're going to open up our pre-populated AFC file called MES underscore AFC underscore one. Just as a reminder, the first part of the MES file we'll need to complete is this blue box where we set our global system variables. These are variables that will apply to all three subsystems. In previous MES input file tutorials where we've not done assimilation, we've set our FM0 at 1. But because we do want to assimilate some of the wall rock in this model, we're going to set this value somewhere between 0 and 1. Uh, just as a reminder, FM0 represents the minimum mass fraction of liquid that must accumulate in the wall rock subsystem in order to trigger assimilation. Uh, for example, let's set our FM0 at 0.05, or 5%. During the run, heat from the magma subsystem is transferred to the wall rock subsystem, partially melting it. So when FM0 is set to 0.05, if greater than 5% liquid accumulates in the wall rock subsystem at any point during the run, such as say, if we were to accumulate 6.4% liquid, for example, that percent liquid less 5% is transferred to the magma subsystem. So in this case, 1.4% of the liquid accumulated in the wall rock subsystem at that particular equilibration step will be transferred to the magma subsystem and then the new equilibrated magma composition will be calculated. And this will happen every time the percent liquid accumulates in your wall rock and that percent liquid gets over that FM0 threshold. The next global system parameter is the excluded phases category. I'm not going to exclude any phases in this tutorial, but if you're not sure how to do that and you need to, you can refer to our prior tutorial on how to complete an MES input file for an FC only run. Our next global system parameter is pressure. Again, it's given in bars. So we want to run this model at two kilobars. So we'll enter 2000 into this cell. Let's leave enthalpy convergence steps alone. Remember the sweet spot for this variable is 30. So we'll leave 30 in this box, uh, unless you find yourself with some unreasonably good reason to. And for our final global system variable, oxygen fugacity, we don't want to run along a buffer during this simulation. So we need to type in none. Remember, exactly is given in column F into the cell. For our magma subsystem, we've pre-populated this MES file with a basaltic composition, renormalized to 100 weight percent. So let's set our magma subsystem starting temperature which is below our composition. And let's set that at 1300 degrees. Remember, this is just a jumping off point for melts to find the liquidus temperature for the magma composition. So it doesn't need to be particularly above or below the liquidus temperature, just somewhere in the general vicinity of that number. We're also going to lower our delta T down from the FC only tutorial. Now each equilibration step will occur every time the magma subsystem has cooled five degrees. I wouldn't really advise going any lower than that. The lowest I've been able to run without an issue is a delta T of two degrees, but the MCS was really sluggish and unhappy due to the intensive nature of the calculations required. Finally, we have our two different options for stopping the magma chamber simulator runs prematurely, either at a hard stop temperature or at a certain percentage of liquid left in the magma subsystem. In the previous MES input file tutorial, we did an FC only run and used the wall rock bypass option to avoid the wall rock find solidus step 
And this was done in order to save time. And also because if you're not in need of that information, it really just is an extra step to do. But because that wall rock bypass option wanted a hard stop temperature, our run was terminated prematurely after the magma subsystem had cooled to a temperature less than what we had set, which was 900 degrees. Uh, in this case, however, we're attempting to assimilate material, and we might be interested in what is happening at those lower temperatures. So we're not going to employ any sort of hard stop function. Remember, when you elect to not use a hard stop, the magma chamber simulator run will terminate when one of two things happens. Either one, melts will crash, or two, the run will terminate once the magma and wall rock subsystems have reached thermal equi equilibrium. Now for our wall rock composition, we have this really nice Sierra Nevada granite. And again, it's had some water, just a smidge, and a little bit of CO2 added to it. And that composition has been renormalized to 100 weight percent. As a reminder, because there is CO2 in these compositions, I'm going to want to run this model using Rhyolite Melts version 1.2.0, as that's the one that can model carbon dioxide as an exolved volatile phase. The next few parameters for the wall rock subsystem are used during that wall rock find solidus step. Uh, during this step, the magma chamber simulator needs to calculate the phase equilibria constraints for the wall rock composition prior to the run so it knows those PTX conditions uh, at the value assigned for FM0. So anytime that you need information about the wall rock subsystem or if you're accounting for the wall rock in your run, or if you're considering the effects of assimilation, as we are here, you'll need to complete this wall rock portion of the MES input file, and you will need to use the step three wall rock find solidus button during the MCS run, as I'll show you in the next tutorial. The first of these variables we need to assign is the wall rock find solidus end temperature. This is the temperature that the wall rock find solidus step will stop at, and it needs to be at least one temperature decrement below the calculated solidus temperature for that composition. So for example, if your delta T is 20 degrees, this temperature needs to be at least 20 degrees below the calculated solidus temperature. And this is a huge part of why we really advocate running your compositions through standalone melts at your proposed PTX FO2 conditions. Otherwise, you might be fixing this value over and over and over again until you get it just right, instead of spending an extra five minutes from the get-go and not having to redo your run parameters 27 times. So here, we're going to actually set this end temperature at 730 degrees. So I know that that's below where FM0 is, and that's below where the solidus is. The next parameter is the delta T for the wall rock find solidus step. This is essentially the same parameter as for the magma subsystem, but this time it is the, in degrees C between each equilibration step during the wall rock find portion of the run. Because your delta T kind of controls how fast your run progresses, I like to set my delta T for this step around 25 degrees. But if you need fine detailed information, certainly, certainly feel free to set smaller delta T values. In fact, this really is the case for this wall rock composition. I know that the FM0 lies uh, within one delta T of the solidus if delta T is set at 25 degrees. So I need my delta T to be smaller so that there will be at least one delta T between FM0 and the solidus. So I'm gonna set this actually, we're gonna go ahead and put this at 10. Uh, the next parameter we'll need for, to set for this step is the wall rock find solidus start temperature or the starting temperature just for this little prime segment of the run. Unlike the magma starting temperature, this is not a jumping off point for melts to find the liquidus temperature. Uh, the wall rock find solidus function will start at this value, and I would recommend setting it somewhere between the temperature for FM0 and the calculated liquidus temperature for this composition, as this step is really concerned with finding out the conditions surrounding whatever the value it is you've set for FM0. So let's set ours to 850 degrees. I know that's pretty low, but it's going to save us some time than if we were to start up, you know, by the liquidus around, say, like 1100 degrees. The next parameter is the initial mass of wall rock that you want in your system. 
In the magma chamber simulator, the magma subsystem automatically starts out at 100 grams all of the time, and there's nothing you can do to change it. So if you're needing a certain wall rock to magma ratio, keep in mind that you will need to scale the mass of your wall rock proportionally to the magma subsystem. Additionally, the heat used to melt the wall rock comes from crystallization in the magma subsystem. So the smaller your mass of your wall rock is, or the more evolved your wall rock composition is, the easier it will be to generate some amount of partial melt over the assigned FM0 value, therefore triggering assimilation. For this run, we want to have a 1 to 1 ratio of magma to wall rock. So let's assign a mass of 100 grams to the wall rock subsystem. The final parameter for the wall rock subsystem is the initial temperature of the wall rock at the beginning of the MCS run. Now this is very different from the wall rock fine solidus temperature. This is the actual temperature the wall rock subsystem will be at at the beginning of your MCS run, and then it will heat up from there. So the only requirement for this parameter is that it must be lower than the wall rock fine solidus end temperature. So essentially the wall rock must be completely solid before the MCS calculations begin. This means you can't start with your wall rock being a crystalline mush. Sorry guys. Uh, so let's go ahead and set your wall rock temperature here to 400 degrees. And let's save our input file. Now in this simulation, because we're not modeling any recharge events, only assimilation and fractional crystallization, the final thing for me to do is to make sure that recharge is turned off. Uh, the magma chamber simulator can model up to five recharge and mixing events in one simulation. So you'll notice that, you know, if you scroll down here in the MES file, you'll see that each recharge event has a different color. The best way to turn the recharge off is to make sure that the masses are set at zero and that these two bottom boxes are empty. So I just like to kind of scroll through, make sure that the mass for each recharge is set at zero. There's no trigger or delta T trigger temperature set. And that's all good. So that concludes our tutorial on how to prepare an input file for an assimilation and fractional crystallization run using the magma chamber simulator. In our next tutorial, I'll show you how to prepare an MES input file for a model involving recharge and magma mixing.